much, now I'm swallowed Now I'm the fool while you're breaking rules Dangerous path that I follow you do and it hurts as I bleed for you cry for you oh, oh. let me bleed as I bleed for you cry for you Seems to follow Like a shadow dark And cold to the touch Am I insane not to let go? Oh, go on, just do what you do All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. Today I have the iFlight Cinebee 75 HD. This was provided by my friends at Banggood for review. Uh, it's, it's an interesting little drone. It's a uh, smaller, kind of whoop-sized camera platform. The camera it's using is the Cadex Turtle V2. So it'll record 1080p, 60 frames per second. We're all pretty familiar with the Cadex Turtle, but this has a few different things going for it. It, it wasn't built to be like an acro machine. It, I mean, it'll do a little bit of acro, but that's not really the the point of this. This is more slow, low, trying to get a little bit of cinematic footage. And it actually produces pretty decent footage, as you saw in the intro. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It flies very, very well. Um, but it does require a little bit of tweak. Uh, a few little things I had uh, change on it. Uh, props i didn't i didn't like the props that it came with it came with some uh gem fan props gem fan 1635s it also came with a set of hq props in the box and the hq props while not having as much thrust and control they were definitely smoother flying props than the gem fans the gem fans you can see just a standard tri-blade Something to remember when you're looking for props for this thing is it has to have a one and a half millimeter uh, hole in the center for the motor shaft. A little more info on the, the drone here. It uses the 
uses the success uh, micro f4 flight tower system it's a 16 by 16 stack i've never had a 16 by 16 stack on a quad and oh my goodness is it tiny i i am just blown away by how small that flight stack is i mean 20 by 20 seems small when it came out this one it's, it is microscopic uh, this came pre-installed with the rxsr receiver which uh they did a really good job installing it they didn't hook up the uh smart port wire which is fine i mean not too concerned about telemetry, especially with on-screen OSD. Um, in the product literature, it does say you can control the, uh, the camera and the VTX through the OSD. Couldn't control the camera through the OSD. Uh, I, I don't know what they were referring to, but it definitely didn't work for me. Uh, as far as the VTX goes, yeah, it's a VTX, it's part of the 16 by 16 stack. It's, it has pit mode, 25 watt, 100 and 200 milliwatt. It uses a, uh, a UFL style connector comes with this uh you know the the typical monopole flexible antenna which is fine it works really well uh and it has um irc tramp telemetry for the vtx audio switching all in all it works really well uh the the title for this says it'll take two to three s but if you look through the product literature it says two s only but the flight controller and the esc are two to four s but I think the limiting factor here is the motors. It uses a B motor, 1103, 10,000 kV motor. I did fly it on 2S and I did fly it on 3S. Um, 3S flew a bit better, a little bit more control, but you definitely have to set up a different PID profile for that. This did come with Betaflight 3.5. It flew really well on 3.5, but I wanted to put Betaflight 4.0 on it. So I upgraded to 4.0.2. And on 2S, it flies just fine. On 3S, as soon as you arm, this thing will go straight to the moon without, uh, without you putting in any stick input. So you do have to dial the PIDs back for Betaflight 4.0 with a 3S LiPo on it, which is very convenient because Betaflight has the auto PID profile options now, which makes setting up things like this pretty easy. Now, Something to note about this is there is a bit of jello to the camera and that jello is greatly reduced by putting an ND filter on it. Uh, on this, I have a ND8 filter on the front of the Cadex Turtle. Uh, unfortunately, it does not come with an ND filter, but they're only a couple bucks and I highly recommend picking up an ND filter. And um, I don't remember which YouTuber I saw, but he used uh, BluTac to hold his ND filter in place. And yeah, that, that's a big tip right there. That really helps every time you bop the ground too hard with this, ND filter will go flying off and you gotta try to find it. Um, but uh, yeah, put a little bit of blue tack on there, kind of holds it in place. A uh, few other things you have to do before you get this thing going is you gotta take the camera lens off, clean the dust out of it, clean the dust off the sensor, and then refocus the whole thing. After you get it focused, you gotta get into the OSD uh, menu for the Caddx Turtle and turn the sharpening way down. It is way over sharpened out of the box. Um, the Caddx Turtle is pretty cool. They, they decided to mount it underneath the frame, kind of like in its own separate little pod, which works really well. And this little connector back here is for the joystick that came with it to be able to program the Caddx Turtle. Now, another thing to note is if you have an SD card installed, this thing will automatically start recording on power up. And since there's a cover on it, you can't get to the, the stop and start record buttons, which doesn't really matter until you try to use the OS to change the OSD settings or the cat external settings. Uh, just pop the SD card out, plug a LiPo in and put your, your joystick in there and you'll be all right. Just got to get the SD card out of it. Now it flies really well. Uh, the props, the HQ props are, super fragile they bend they break they pop off but they fly really good uh the gem fan props are way more durable uh the ducts are a little on the fragile side i mean i did clip a tree pretty dang hard with this one and it cracked but you know it still flies just fine like that and you can see there's some stress marks on the props but um overall not too bad i did have to put a little piece of uh like battery mat here on the top plate and it comes with two of these, they call them magic battery straps. These battery straps, they suck. I mean, let's face it, they're, they're terrible, but they work. Um, you just gotta really, really cinch them down. And if you crash, yeah, you're gonna, the battery's gonna fall off. That, that's, that's just what it is. Ideally, just don't crash it. Uh, I flew it indoors a little bit, 
flies great indoors. It's a good little filming rig for in the house. Uh, overall, I have to say, if you're looking for like a small HD recording platform, this is pretty nice. I mean, it's not as good as say a Shendrone Squirt, but you know, that thing's hauling around a GoPro Hero 7. Clearly this is not that, this is not even in the same ballpark as that. But if you want something small and cheap, you wanna do some exploratory flying, indoors, outdoors, and uh, you want that HD footage to go with it, this is actually a really, a really good option. And if you have the time and the effort to put in the PID tuning, uh, you can make this thing fly really, really well. Uh, I, I definitely recommend this. Uh, of course, I, this is a sample size of one. I don't know what the long-term reliability will be or for that matter, what other ones being produced are like. But in my experience, this is pretty darn good. I, I definitely am gonna keep it in my backpack when I go traveling. Just a little bit of, a little bit of covert uh, drone ops, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the lipos I'm using, I was using a, I really like the 2S 450 uh, GMBs. I think that's what I was using. And the 3S, I was using 3S 300 HV, uh, which was pretty good, but I only got about two minutes of flight time. I also have a, uh, I think it's a 520 3S, which uh, a lot more flight time, but you definitely feel the extra weight. So play around with the lipos. Uh, if you're curious on which ones I use, I'll put them in the uh, description below. Go ahead and click on one of those and you can get the details. All right, uh, this is uh, the iFlight Cinebi 75 HD. Uh, very, very good little drone. Uh, a lot of fun too, a lot of fun to fly around. And then you can get that HD footage afterwards. If you're curious about this drone or anything else I brought up in this video, please check the description below. Uh, click the links and help me out. Uh, they are affiliate links. That's how I keep bringing products into this channel to bring reviews to you. I enjoy everything I do here. If you have any questions, comments, please put them in the, the comments below. I try to read and respond to just about everybody. If you're having, if you have one of these and you have problems, or if you're, uh, or if you're having issues with tuning, let me know. Um, I'll put my Betaflight 4.0.2 uh, CLI dump down in the description. Please don't just copy and paste that into your into your CLI. Just look at it and see what changes I made. It is not the perfect tune. I will be the first to admit I am not great at PID tuning, but I got it flying decent enough on 4.0 that I think it's worth making the upgrade from 3.5 to 4.0. But of course, if you do decide to upgrade, make sure you save your old settings just so you can go back. And I'll put the stock settings down there too in case for some reason you lost them and you ventured down the 4.0 route and you wanna go back. So I'll put those down in the description below. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking us out. I hope you enjoy my videos. Uh, if you have any, pro any questions, please put them down there. All right. I'll catch you next time.